Okay, so this is my Samsung Snapdragon X Elite laptop and it's currently updating because it's running Windows 11, so all it does is updates. The reason I'm not using the laptop display is because, as you can see, the display is damaged. I bought it really cheap from eBay just to have a play around with. But what I wanted to do today, I'll talk about Snapdragon and why I don't recommend them anymore. The issue I found out about the other day, a lady was talking to me about a Dell laptop that she'd been given. And by the way, what, what on earth is going on here? Look, it's got some weird clicky thing with the mouse down the bottom and it's doing this. I haven't had this before, um, but yeah, nice. So if we go to the Dell website, I'm pressing enter. If I press space, the keyboard's working that. Press the Windows key. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a restart. We'll ignore the problems with the input because it may be something to do with the broken screen. So what I've done is folded the screen back on itself so it, it ignores any touch input and mouse and keyboard. So I'm going to use this instead because there's plenty more to talk about with Snapdragon. So the laptop the lady had been given by her work was this one, Dell XPS laptop, Snapdragon Elite. And if I do a search for Snapdragon and Canon can't print, I think her model was a 7501 or something like that, but as soon as I put in 750, it comes up with 753, we're not connect, all sorts of things. And there's just loads and loads and loads of it. So I've got one of these, a 7006. So let's just minimize that. So my printer's already set up and is on my network. It's a, it's a Wi-Fi enabled printer or a network printer. So basically, pretty much any device that joins my Wi-Fi network should be able to print from it. So let's see if it's easy with this. So printers and scanners, add a device. It's found it, so it's found this on the network. So let's go add, well it didn't, didn't ask for anything. So let's go back to the web page of my printer and let's go control P and see if we can print. Yeah, it's found my printer. Uh, so we've got some more settings here, A4. I can't see a option to do landscape or portrait. There's not a lot of options in here. Let's see what happens if I cancel that and just use the print within Chrome. So if we do it here and print, yeah, that's just the same. Okay, we'll see if it prints anyway. So we'll go with page two because that's got the image on it. So let's go page two and print. And I've got a camera upstairs to see if that's gonna print out. While it's doing that, I'm just gonna try the HP app because there wasn't a lot of control on that. I'm gonna go with the HP Smart app first of all. Yep, so that's printed out fine. And let's open that up and see if it comes up with any messages or looks like it's gonna work properly. So yes. And the noise you can hear in the background is the rain. So let's accept all of that. So I'll skip the sign in for now. Not worried about my location. So is my printer recognized? Windows requires HP Smart to have location access. Of course it does. Why on earth does it need that? Just to print. Okay, so here's my printer. Shows the IP address. Well, it doesn't think it's got a problem, does it? So I wonder if we'll get more options when we go back to the web browser now. So let's do control P. Does it come up with anything else here? No, so that comes up the same. Anybody else think it's surprising that I haven't got portrait or landscape mode? So how do I print with the smart print? So print documents. So what about printer settings? Ah, here we go, so printer is asleep installed and so on, all of that looks all right. Print quality, see what's printing. I don't generally use the, I do on my phone. No, I use AirPrint on my phone. So how do I print a web page but in portrait? I don't think I have the option. So let's save a document. So I'm gonna save this, let's do a different web page. I'll do this page. So if I do print, Will it let me save it as a PDF? Yeah. So let's save that. And I'll just save it on the desktop for now. Okay, so now I've got a document. Let's try the HP app. Print documents. I do have to sign in, do I? I do. So I'm gonna sign in because clearly it doesn't work without signing in. So signing in now. We're having trouble signing you in. 
Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes, so I'm gonna skip that and try and sign in again. Sign in. Okay, so open HP Smart. HP Smart currently supports printing of PDF documents. Print other file types directly from their associated. Well, lucky I saved it as a PDF. So on my desktop, that was the document. Okay. So it's loading it up really slowly. Okay, so it is showing it. That shows me the pages. So that's working. Oh, portrait, it is there now. Was that there? That wasn't there before, was it? So if I do landscape and I'll just do the first part, I didn't say turn it on its side. It's just ridiculous. I'll just try this on my Mac in a minute. Essentially it does print, but it's pretty dumbed down. Now, is this because it's a Snapdragon or is this just what HP have for printer settings now? So we've got things like, we've got paper settings and it's also not loading my preview. So it's like it's given up. And this is a local PDF file on my laptop. <laughs> Rubbish. Okay, so how do I close that? Let's nice. just force close that. HP Smart. Yeah, that was the bit. Yeah, just, just disappointing really. So I've got two laptops here. This is a normal Windows laptop with an N150 processor. So the not an ARM based processor. And I'll go through ARM in a minute. If I want to print this page, if I do Control P, same as I did on the other device, we get the same menu. Uh, now it's not in dark mode like the other one was, but it's picked up my printer. Uh, I can do more settings and you can see again, I don't have portrait or landscape. Why don't I have portrait or landscape? That's really weird, um, but very few options. So uh, pages, quality and so on. So all of that's there, but pretty basic really. Now on my MacBook, which is also an ARM-based computer, but running Mac OS from Apple. So if I do Command P, you can see I get this preview up. It comes up really fast, really swift. Uh, and we have a lot more options. So I've got presets, default settings. Uh, I've got uh, my page ranges, double-sided, paper size, and so on. And if I do landscape, that's what I expect to happen with landscape. So it gets the page in better because of the way the page is set out, it just means I can get this on better. But I can just switch between the two and it's instant. And we've got more options on here as well at watermark, paper handling, all sorts of things. So it looks like the Snapdragon is printing as you'd expect it to on a Windows device. So my HP printer is compatible. No idea why you don't get the option for landscape when printing a web page. So why are we using ARM-based processors? Well, the main reason is that they tend to run much cooler, they tend to be really snappy, uh, and they tend to have really, really good battery life. So you've already got it in your mobile phone and you've had it in your mobile phone for 10 years or so. It's only 2020 that they started to switch for Apple MacBooks, uh, and this is the MacBook Air. So this device is super slim and light. Uh, the battery life's amazing. I think it's about 18 hours or something like that. It springs to life as soon as you turn it on. Uh, it's completely silent. There are no fans in this and it never really gets that hot. It is just the perfect laptop, which is what I was expecting when Microsoft went to ARM-based laptops. I knew there was gonna be some problems at the start. They've been doing them since May 2024, so it's over a year now, and still we're getting people with IT departments helping them that can't print from their Windows 11 laptop. And that's just one of the things that is the problem with, with ARM-based Windows laptops. So I did a search on ChatGPT, uh, and this isn't always the most reliable way of doing things, but I thought it'd be interesting to see what it said. So what programs are widely reported to not work with Snapdragon X? There's a list here of various different things. Now Fortnite apparently is supposed to run now. Things like AutoCAD, some VPN tools like NordVPN, Adobe Creative Cloud apps. And these are some of the more expensive laptops on the market that can't run certain software after a year or more than a year. And I did see this video recently uh, from David Does Tech, so one year later on ARM. And there's been a big push on Snapdragon laptops and I was really excited about them. I, I, my MacBook is amazing, I absolutely love it. And I think the processor is perfect for laptops because you want it to stay cool, you want it to be silent and you want it to be great battery life, but with good performance. 
We all know how good flagship phones are now. David Does Tech showed the Xbox app, which now has ARM support, and he couldn't get any of the games to run, or if he did get them to run, they ran terribly. I watched it a couple of weeks ago. So really disappointing. I've actually seen better performance on a MacBook like mine, and my MacBook is a 8 gig of RAM, the M1 series, which is the base model with the most basic processor that, that Apple have done uh, with ARM. And this Samsung laptop, which I think was about £1,400. I, I paid about 130 I did a video on it. It's yeah running their sort of higher end, first generation, but a higher end uh, 80100 processor. And it's got 16 gig of RAM and it's got really fast storage. So... I just thought it would be amazing. My MacBook feels faster. Aside from the Windows updates thing, because the Windows update thing is just an absolute pain. But when I start using my MacBook and I'm browsing the web and I'm watching videos and doing various things, it just feels faster. And I know that the raw power of this is more than my MacBook. It's newer, it's it's more up to date, it's, it's faster overall, but it doesn't feel it because of the operating system. If you just type in Snapdragon, it's pretty much all negative and I'm pretty sure that the videos when they first started coming out were very positive and were looking at performance and things like that but they still just don't seem to be there I mean that video is from a year ago but things don't seem to have got much better and the prices are really cheap so if you go to Windows laptops I think the first recommendation is a Snapdragon one here so the first one here that £300 off uh, it's a Snapdragon X Plus but here, look, Snapdragon X for 399 I just don't think I would have predicted it would have gone that fast. And as long as you're not using programs that aren't supported, it'll be a lovely laptop to use for most things because the battery life is so good. You know, plenty of RAM, reasonable storage for these days. But if I do a search here, processor, yeah, Snapdragon X Elite, so the same as this one. They start off at 750 and the top end of them to 150 and that's the same processor as mine double the ram there are compatibility lists so this windows and arm ready software and you can search for applications but i'd rather have it where it just shows me a list of all the things that confirm not to work but the trouble is it's always changing so you look at a list and and it's been updated or like like for instance fortnite is showing well see what it says on here unplayable and this list has at least got things that are, are sort of checked and so on so autocad not supported so you can see it straight away but it's in amongst i can't i don't think i can uh, oh not supported there you go 6.92 percent of total apps are not supported oh here we are perfect i couldn't find this earlier on apple tv app not supported look and that's weird because well you could see that apple might not want it to work uh because obviously it works on a macbook Sky Go, so streaming services, Doom Eternal, uh, PlayStation 3 emulator. So several things that have been reported not to work. Let's see if it lets me install Fortnite. So this bit's running slow. Why would this bit run slow? And I've got it on performance as well, and I've got it plugged in. And all this just feels slower than my Ryzen 7 PC in the lounge. So Fortnite and install. Okay, so it's all finished downloading, so let's give it a go. So this is the bit that was stopping it working before the anti-cheat device. So I'm going to say yes. ARM64 CPU is not currently supported for this game. Brilliant. Update 12th of August. Windows on Snapdragon support is now available for Epic Online Services anti-cheat. Windows on Snapdragon support is coming to Epic Online Services. It's now available, so there's something here. You need a different portal, let's sign into the developer portal, organization settings, console developer access. Okay, I don't want to play it that much. I'm just going to leave it. Why it has to be so hard. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.